comes to us all the way from Johnson City, Tennessee. Please put your hands together for Beth Smith. What's up? How y'all doing? I am from Johnson City, Tennessee. You might have heard of it. I live about 10 miles from Bristol Motor Speedway for all you NASCAR fans. We got any NASCAR fans? I'm a big fan. Don't you hate it when people don't understand your love for NASCAR? They say, I just don't see how you could like watch a bunch of cars going around and around in a little circle. Well, I'm sure sports like basketball are much better, where guys in shorts and jock straps are up and down the court trying to get a bouncy ball through a little hoop. <laughs> or what about golf? Or you hit a ball and walk for a mile just to hit it again. <laughs> or what about fishing, where you sit for hours in a teeny boat, guzzling beer, attempting to hook a fish just to throw it back in the water again? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a lot better. And I don't want you guys to think I'm knocking other sports. I'm not. I'm just saying that good-looking, wealthy men driving expensive, high-performance <coughs> cars, now that's a real woman's sport. <laughs> I'll be in my car and just start praying out loud. Then I'll get stopped at a red light and look beside me, and the kid beside me is just staring at me. I'm sure he's thinking, who is she talking to? I don't see one of those Bluetooth devices. So then I get all paranoid and pick up myself up. I'm like, dear God, I just want to come to you right now and pray about this situation. I know you're probably wondering why I'm talking to you in my cell phone, but the kid beside me is going to think I'm a little loony if I just start praying out loud. I don't know what my problem is. I can never have a silent prayer. And if I don't have my cell phone nearby, it's like all of a sudden I become a ventriloquist. Dear God, please do that now. So I'm trying to quit smoking. At least that's what I tell the guys I go out with. No. Smoking itself can be so stressful. First, you have to find matches or a lighter. You have to find places that let you smoke. Sometimes you have to leave a building to smoke. And not to mention the smoker's math. You ever have to do the smoker's math? I'll be getting ready to go out for, say, three hours. I'll look to see how many cigarettes I have left. Maybe I have 12 left. Well, then I get all stressed out. What if I smoke more than four an hour? I mean, I don't need that kind of stress. And then I'm like, well, crap, okay. Maybe I can buy another pack, or maybe I can bum one from somebody. Okay, I'll just smoke one an hour, and that'll get me until tomorrow. I mean, it's enough to make you want a cigarette. <laughs> have you all seen that DrFailMatch.com commercial where he's like, what if you stopped playing scared and just started doing? You're worth it. And bingo, you meet that person that's been waiting for you since the day you were born. Well, what about those girls that date guys 20 years older than them? <laughs> okay, Dr. Phil, so you're saying on the day I was born, some college guy's just sitting in his dorm with his buddies, reading the paper, and just gets an epiphany. And he's like, hey, hey guys, did you see the birth announcements? <laughs> Little Andrea Beth, eight pounds, six ounces, thinks she might be the one. <laughs> so I've got this new deodorant, you might have heard of it, it's Secret Clinical Strength. It even comes with this little instruction guide that tells you how to use it. How complicated is putting on deodorant that we need instructions? But I was reading it one day, and it has this notice that says, if you need antiperspirant protection anywhere else on your body, please consult with your doctor. Where else am I going to need protection? I'm going to start sweating between my fat rolls? <laughs> and can you imagine making a doctor's appointment to discuss this? And ma'am, what do you need to see the doctor for? Well, I'm sweating from areas other than my underarms. I need to know if I can use protection there. <laughs> then, oh, it gets better. There's even a message from the International Hyperhidrosis Society that says, yeah, there's a message from the International Hyperhidrosis Society if you, this clinical strength isn't enough, then apparently you have a medical condition. Great, let me just add that to my list of problems. <laughs> let me just go to the Hyperhidrosis Anonymous meetings. Hi, my name's Beth and I sweat uncontrollably. <laughs> so I decided to take my pet turtle Scooter to the vet, because he hadn't moved in like two weeks. I found out he had worms. The vet asked me how often I cleaned out his tank, and I'm like, well, once a month. She's like, ma'am, you have to clean it every week. Every week? I barely have time to bathe myself every week. <laughs> so then I was thinking, I'm like one of those unfit pet owners. I'm like those people that have 27 cats and don't give them food and water. And then I was thinking, well, I want to have a baby one day. What if I leave my baby in his dirty diaper all day? That'd be horrible. 
Maybe I shouldn't have kids. I don't even think I can handle this turtle. Maybe I should just stick to pet rocks. <laughs> so I recently lost 50 pounds. And gained 100 back. <laughs> After I lost weight, my trainer said, Now Beth, always remember, nothing tastes as good as being skinny. I try to remember that right before I dig into a big old plate of cheese fries with ranch. I picture myself on a beach somewhere in a little string bikini soaking up the sun, but then I think, nah, Tim Kenny with a little skirt will work just as good. Let's eat. <laughs> no, I am trying to diet again. I miss the days of going to McDonald's and getting Big Macs and Biggie fries and eating a whole pizza and crazy bread. <laughs> now I have to count calories. I hate it. I have some skinny friends though, and I was asking them one day how they stay so thin. And one goes, well, through the week, I just eat saltine crackers, and on the weekend, I eat real food. Saltine crackers? How do you survive on saltine crackers? I eat those in between meals when I'm not even hungry. <laughs> I just get bored and look at the cabinet and see them and start eating them. There's girls that make meals out of saltine crackers. And then my other friend goes, well, I eat fruit through the week and try to eat on the weekend. Try to eat? How do you have to try to eat? I love eating. I think about it all the time. <laughs> After I finish a meal, five minutes later, I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat at my next meal. <laughs> I just don't understand these girls that don't eat. I feel sorry for them. I just want to go up to them and stuff a big greasy cheeseburger down their throat and say, I'm sorry, you just looked hungry. <laughs> girl and I finally surrendered my dating life over to God yep I want God to bring me a man because one thing's for sure match.com won't get it done <laughs> I'm not lying a thousand bucks and not a <laughs> so now it's in God's hands I think it should be a lot easier after all most men think they're God's gift to women anyway <laughs> so I'm serious I'm just waiting on God to send me a guy and apparently even God is having trouble finding me a date because it's been months and nothing. I mean, how bad do you have to be when even God is going, look, I'm calling around and I can only do so much. That's my time, guys. I'm Beth Smith. Thank you.